Thank you. It's right here is private property. Just on the website alone, and it says something like you will have 
Make sure you have plenty of pads available because you'll be eating. Make sure you have movies available because so you can you can have or while you're facing the terrible pains and bleeding that you can be entertained. That is what is on this website. Now think about what that sounds like. That is depravity in its own in, in its purest form. While you are experiencing the death of your baby, entertain yourself. Have a movie, have a book. And then the questions on the website, and the same question and answer says, How quick can I have sex again? Well, as soon as you feel up to it, then you'll be back again, and then mission cycle continues. This is the reality of the depravity of man. Many of you might even profess to be Christians and say, This is this is my right as a human being, I can do what I want with my life. But why do you say that? You say that because you are dead in your sin. You hate God. Now that might be shocking to you. You might think, well, I go to church on Sundays, or I pray to God, and I, I, I try to live a life, good life, and I, I love Jesus. I think he's a good guy. But you actually hate him. Because you hate the God of the Bible. You have created a false God in your own imagination. One that pleases you yourself. One that justifies your murder and your your sinfulness. Now just think about this. Just the Bible says, thou shalt not kill. That is one of the Ten Commandments. Everyone would say that's correct. We should not kill. And Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5, he breaks down a little further and he says, if you get angry at someone, you've actually murdered them in your heart. Well, other people would say, well, I've never committed adultery. But Jesus also said, if you look at someone with lust in your eye, in, in your heart, you've actually committed adultery. In other words, it's a heart issue. If you want to know what the solution is to all of our divisions that we see in this country today, if you want to see what the, the solution is to all the, the hatred that we see in the world today, because the reality is it's not just in America. You go to India where everyone looks the same and they have a caste system and even amongst people that look the same, they still hate each other. Why? Because it's a heart issue. It's a problem in their heart. They have murder in their heart. When they come here, they're not victims. They are murderers. It's in the heart. They know what they're doing. And so what is the solution? What is the solution to, to, to this hatred in our heart, to the murder in our heart? When we see a riot in the same we see that it is murder in our heart. All praise and glory to God alone, who is our only authority on this earth. He is sovereign. He controls all things. Everything bends towards his will. And uh, we know that God is, is, protects his own. He protects us even in the times of uh, those moments when uh, we can 
face opposition um, for the protection of life, which is interesting. The face opposition for the protection of life. That's that that just shows you what sin, the, the result of sin. As I was saying earlier, it's a hard issue. Um, what we see going on in this country and around the world. Again, you go to Africa and where everyone looks the same. And what do you find? You find discrimination amongst tribes and people groups. Why? It's because we will find any reason we can to hate one another. You go to uh, India. Again, you find caste system where just because you were born to a certain family, you're discriminated against. You look the same exact as the other person. Or they'll say that you look darker, you look lighter, you they'll find any reason, and then you'll find people that will discriminate, and they'll say, well, because you, um, you, you talk with a certain accent, or you are from the South, or you're from the North, or whatever. We'll find any reason to hate one another. This is the reality of sin in this world. So the only solution, the only solution is the gospel. Amen. That Jesus Christ came, God. This is, imagine this. God himself, Jesus Christ, came off of his throne and lowered himself beneath the angels, took on the form of man, lived on this earth amongst all this mess that we deal with. He saw, imagine God seeing his creation rebelling against himself and he's there in their, in their midst. He faced every temptation we would ever face and yet never sinned. He's sympathetic to our needs and our, our struggles. He was a man of sorrows. Isaiah prophesied 700 years before Christ was incarnated and became man. And he prophesied that he would be nothing to look at. He was no shampoo model as people would see. He was, he was a man of sorrows. He carried a heavy burden upon his shoulders. But yet, he came to seek and, and, and save the lost. He came to bring redemption and reconciliation to mankind who are separated from God. See, the thing is, we all think that we're children of God. But the reality is, we are created in his image. We are his creation. But we are actually enemies of God. And he's angry with the wicked every single day. This is something that people don't want to talk about. Everyone wants to sing Kumbaya and say that we're all children of God, but yet we are in enmity with him. And yet God is not like us. He's able to love his enemies so much that he was able to come off the throne of heaven and die in their place. Now that's loving your enemy. Now you think about what he did. 33 years on this earth in the midst of all this chaos and, and destruction and sinfulness, murder and and. What we're seeing today is just a, a, a vicious cycle throughout all history. And yet, Christ came to seek and, and save sinners. He went and he spent time with sinners. Now, people like to go and they say, he spent time with sinners, he never judged them. To the contrary, he wasn't sitting at the table with prostitutes and tax collectors and just saying, how was your day today? He was calling them to repentance. And that is what we're doing today. Why? Because we follow the steps of Jesus Christ because we love our neighbors so much. We don't want to see you to go to hell. We don't want to see babies to die by the hands of murderous hands that in this Planned Parenthood. We don't want to see racial uh, divisions in this country. We want to see people reconciled to God and transformed through the, through the power of God in their heart so that they may love one another as they should. You cannot love one another until you have been loved by God that has created you. Yeah. And until you can have the power of God within you to be able to love. You cannot love if you don't have the Spirit of God within you to love, to give you that ability. So this is the beauty of the Gospel. That Christ came off the throne, lived a life that we could not live perfectly so that we may become children of God. He went to the cross. He bore the wrath of God. It was not just the thorns and the and the, the piercings and the, the and the, the nails that caused him pain. He endured the wrath of God that we deserve, the punishment we deserve, and he drank every drop of, of wrath of God that we that I deserved. 
and he experienced that separation and that pain of knowing that what sin really feels like and its consequences. And now, for every person that, that calls upon the name of the Lord and believes and cries out in repentance, that they can be saved and reconciled to God, and he justifies them. And what that word means is that if you stand before a judge in court and you deserve to, you, you murder children, you, you were a, a, a disgusting racist. You were a person who hated people. You did all these atrocious things in your life. And yet by the grace of God, he saved you and transformed you and made you into a new man and woman. And you stood before the judge, deserving the consequences of your sin. And yet the judge, Jesus stands before you in your place. And the judge looks at you and he says, you're free to go. Not because you're right, not because you're just, not because of anything you've done, but because of the work that Christ did on your behalf. Amen. In other words, God treats you as if you lived the life of Christ and he treats Christ as if he lived your life. Now, if that's not love, if that's not grace, then you don't have any idea what that is. Yeah. That is the grace of God. And that's the only way that we're going to see reconciliation. And that's the only reason why, the only way that Amen. we can be able to not kill our children in the womb is if we have the power of God within us that gives us the grace to give to others from the womb to the tomb. Now, if we're separated from God, if we're without Christ, if we're enemies of God, how do we become children of God? Through the justification that God does on our behalf, he adopts us into his family. That's a privilege, that's an honor. That's not something you take lightly. That's not something that, that you think about an adopted child and how precious that is. That you can't, you can't choose the children that you give birth to. But imagine how special it is, if, if, how much beautiful it is that when you go and you say, I'm pregnant and I'm going to have this child. I'm going to raise this child. I'm going to love this child. I'm going to take care of this child. Now that's beautiful. But imagine how much it is as well when you go and say, that's not my child. That's, that's, I have no responsibility to that child. And yet I'm going to adopt that child and treat that child as if it's mine. And everything that is mine, that child, my inheritance is their inheritance. That is the power of the gospel. It stops us to become children of God so that we can be reconciled to Him and that we can be children of God. He indwells us with the Holy Spirit. That's a seal upon our lives to say, this is my child. Nothing's going to snatch this child out of my hand. And that each day, we not we don't live a life of perfection. I'm a sinner saved by grace. I don't deserve anything that I have right now. I have no, I have no, I don't deserve to be able to even utter the word Jesus Christ. But because He's saved me, I want, out of love, oh, no, to see others you. come to Christ and, and be saved, so that they can spend eternity with Him. Because the glorious thing that we, we look for solutions here on this earth, we look for peace, we look for uh, perfection in this world. It's not going to happen, but it is in the plan that God has one day, this earth will dissolve with by fire. Just as the day of Noah, when the earth was dissolved by the, the floods and he saved his elect in the ark of grace, he yes. will do the same at the last days where he will hold the people of God in his hands as he dissolves this earth. Jesus comes back and returns for them and the heavens and earth will be merged together as one. And everything, everything will be restored back to the way it was and even better. That is the hope of the gospel. You'll never find hope in anything else, in any political movement, in any in anything else. Sex, drugs, alcohol, anything. No. Christ alone. Amen. Christ alone. Jesus alone. And we're praying for each other. Praying for the city, we're praying for the tree. Praying for the entire world that we as Christians. Despite what people seem to say that the church is sitting on their hands and not talking about these issues. To the contrary. Just because we're not out we're not, we're not but talking about us. Just because we're not making statements, we're actually getting down and dirty and sharing the gospel. Yes. That is what we do. Loving people more than ourselves because Christ gave us that ability to do that. Because he loved us first. Father God, we pray for this city, for these people. We pray for those that will enter in parenthood. We pray that you will change their hearts. Yes, Lord. That you will transform their hearts from stone to flesh and that you will give them a desire to repent 
and that you they will give you the desire to to serve you and to love you and be obedient to you and to save their child that's in their womb so that that child may grow and may become a man and woman of God that may be an image bearer of God that will give you glory through the life that they lead. We pray, Lord God, for every church in this community that they will wake up and, and will get out of their comfort zones and will get into the streets and begin to proclaim the gospel, whether it be for the pre-born, whether it be to care for the orphan, whether it be to care for the widow, whether it be cared for those who've been hurt by discrimination and, and have hurts and pains, whether it be people that have been hurt by abuse, by all sorts of circumstances. Every single person has a story. Every single person has a hurt and pain. It's the result of sin. And so we pray, Lord God, that you will heal our wounds, heal our sinfulness <clears throat> through the power of the gospel. Yes. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.